Hi, welcome to our collab tutorial of probabilistic gradient pruning. In this tutorial, we will first introduce probabilistic gradient pruning, and then we will show the code to train a model with gradient pruning. First, let's have a look at the introduction to probabilistic gradient pruning. By carefully investigating the on-chip training process, we observe that small gradients tend to have large relative variations or even wrong directions under quantum noises. Also, not all gradient computations are necessary for the training process, especially for small magnitude gradients. These observations provide great opportunities for us to boost the robustness and the efficiency of the query on chip training. Inspired by that, we propose a probabilistic gradient pruning method to predict and only compute gradients of high reliability. Hence, we can reduce noise impact and also save the required number of circuit runs on real quantum machines. Now let's introduce the accumulation window and the pruning window. In the whole training process, we separate all the training epochs into a repeat of an accumulation window followed by a pruning window. There are three important hyperparameters in our probabilistic gradient pruning method. Accumulation window width, pruning ratio, and the pruning window width. In the accumulation window, we collect the information of gradients in each training step. In each step of the pruning window, we probabilistically exempt the calculations of some gradients based on the information collected from the accumulation window and the pruning ratio. The accumulation window width and the pruning window width decide the reliability of the gradient trend evaluation and our confidence in it, respectively. The pruning ratio can be tuned to balance the gradient variance caused by noise perturbation and pruning. Thus, the percentage of the time saved by our probabilistic gradient pruning method is this formula. In our experiments, we find that the setting accumulation window size is 1, the pruning window size is 2 or 3, and the pruning ratio is 0.3 to 0.5, it usually works well in all cases. Now, let's look at the code to train a model with probabilistic gradient pruning. You can run these code shells for installation. After installation, we need to import some modules. We need to import the cosine annealing learning rate scheduler. As our learning rate scheduler. And we need MNIST from touchquantum.datasite as our full classification task. Many models from examples.gradientpruning.q models and many callbacks. These callbacks functions will be called after each epoch. They will do model inference on test and validation data side. They will calculate the accuracy and the loss and save the model parameters. Our trainer inherits from TorchPack, so we need set run directory to set the path to store our training data. We need configs to deal with the configuration fail and the logger to update the training status. Next is a function to build the callbacks. The get sub callbacks and the mix callbacks. There are two functions to build the callbacks for your trainer. Then we load configs. The config file describes everything about the model structure and the hyperparameters of the training process, including batch size, learning rate, number of epochs, and whether to use Kiskis Kis 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 processor. We use Kiskis Kis noise processor to train and test our quantum circuit in the following example. We can run this code to load the config file. Now 
next are the functions to train. In this function, we create the data site and the model according to the configs. And we train our quantum model using case case noise processor. The function will return a list of model accuracy after each epoch with respect to the number of inference. First, we need to clear the scalars.json.l file. We set the device as CUDA. And we create the MNIST dataset with only four digits, 0, 1, 2, 3. Here, you can set the number of testing, training, and validation samples. We don't recommend setting them too large because of the time cost. Next, we pack the three splits of the dataset to three data loaders. Then we create the model using QMulti FC model zero from examples.gradientpruning.qmodels. Then we create the Qiskit processor and attach it to our model. Next, we set the criteria, optimizer, and the scheduler. At last, we build a trainer with these four parameters. Tell the model whether to use Qiskit, set running directories, make the callbacks, and start training. At the very last, we extract the accuracy and the number of forwards after each epoch and return these two lists. Then we can start training with probabilistic gradient pruning. And after this training is over, we modify the configs.model.arc.pruning method to none. Then we can train the model without gradient pruning. We can plot and compare the accuracy curves. Here is the code to plot and compare these two accuracy curves. The number of forwards is the x-axis. You can see, in the noisy environment, our training with gradient pruning can converge faster and achieve higher accuracy than training without gradient pruning. Okay, here comes the end of the video. Any questions are welcome.